The rainforest exhibit here at the California Academy of Sciences is a spectacularly open exhibit with a 360 degree view of live animals and plants. But what makes it tick? Or better yet, who makes it tick? The lack of barrier between the public and the exhibit is what gives it that emergent feeling, the feeling like you're in a living rainforest. That's what makes it special. It also provides an extra challenge. Um, there's, there's very little space in the rainforest that's off exhibit, which is one of the reasons we have to do all of our plant and animal care before opening hours. I come in the morning, usually at the insane hour of 6.30. They may work hard, but these women and men have one of the coolest jobs in town. Just getting to work in a, in a rainforest, you know, in the middle of San Francisco is great. Sometimes I pinch myself and just look around at, at where I'm working. It's just such a, a great environment to be surrounded by all those plants and all those animals um, that most people or a lot of people never even get to see. And to be able to work with them on a daily basis is, is really amazing, especially when I'm in there before or after we're closed and I have kind of the whole place to myself. It really, it really is um, a dream job. A dream job? One of Brooke's duties is taking care of the bats, the only mammal at the academy. It can be a nightmare too. When bats poop on my head, that is my least favorite part of the job. Especially if I've just washed my hair, or, you know, I'm supposed to be going out to dinner after. Um, that's, that's kind of a big bummer. It sends me running down to the showers. In the wild, these bats are nocturnal, so they would be sleeping during the day and they become active right after dusk. So what we've done in our exhibit so that visitors who are here during the day have a chance to see these bats actually being active and feeding is we've switched the light cycle. Meet Nicole Cheney. I take care of all the reptiles, amphibians, and bugs in the rainforest. Nope. Amphibians, reptiles, and bugs? I don't mind the creepy crawly stuff for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> One of Nicole's jobs is feeding the snakes. We always feed them frozen thawed prey. Um, it's just healthier and safer for the snakes. Um, and uh, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's very um, quick and uh, <laughs> Some, some people get scared, you know, just because snakes striking isn't something that, uh, you know, you can just stand calmly and watch without flinching at least a little bit, but it's an exciting time. Equally exciting, and a little less creepy crawly, how about those critters that fly? I take care of the birds. Uh, the birds in the rainforest, we have little passerines that are small songbirds from South America in the rainforest. We also have two macaws. After a year, the songbird population is starting to grow. There's quite a few species in there that we would love to have offspring from. And they've got the idea, they're making the nests. There's people can see, they're very obvious nests in a lot of places, you can see them. The birds have become very acclimated. There are birds that will sit, I think a silver beak made a nest in a planter box right next to a door, right across from one of the elevators. And people were, we just stanchioned it off and she just sat there and people and she had a chick and was great. She had no problem with it. So that's nice to see. That shows us that we're doing something right. They're, they're really getting in the groove there. And how do the birds get along with the butterflies? The butterflies do land on the birds' food dishes. The butterflies do not have longevity over three weeks. It's a whole circle of life going on in there. Plus, it's really important to control the butterfly population. We do not have nearly enough acreage of plants to support hungry caterpillars. They would devastate us in no time. So to discourage the butterflies from reproducing on exhibit, we do not plant the plants that would be the host plants for the caterpillars for each of those species of butterflies we release. Our butterflies come to us from cooperative farms in Costa Rica. Uh, typically, the, the, the two businesses that we work with work with local families who have a small scale butterfly rearing farm on their property and they will collect the pupa, pack them up and ship them overnight to us. We then unpack the pupa very, very carefully and pin them up in a temperature humidity controlled chamber where the adult butterflies will emerge in the chamber and then we release the emerged adult butterflies every morning. Kristen was able to go to Costa Rica this summer and discover for herself what a rainforest experience truly is. And what did she find? What I found is we need to be a lot messier. One of the unique aspects of our rainforest exhibit that I appreciate is the fact that it's trying to be natural and we want it to look messy and disordered. Um, it's not an ornamental display and if it appears to be an ornamental display then we've not done our job thoroughly.